Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. Today we are going to fire up the mill. We gotta to try to get some uh, things taken care of on the cut list for the chicken church. We need rafters, we need some fascia, we need some lookouts, we need some purlins, and just some miscellaneous two by fours. So we still have a decent log inventory here. And what we're gonna do is, is again, use our math that we did in other videos to see what yields the best. So I'm looking for two by sixes true two by sixes, I may start with some of this smaller stuff because eventually I'm gonna to have to do a little bit more lap siding, which I was cutting at eight inches. So we may need the bigger logs for that. But we're gonna do some measurements, see what we can do, get them on the mill. I got Cam and Kelly helping. So the first thing we need are eight foot long true two by sixes, as I mentioned, and looking at this tiny little log on its smallest end, it's about eight and a half. So if I use my rough 30%, then that's a little over six, so like six and a quarter maybe that we can get a cant out of. If we've got a little bit of weighing on two by six, not a huge deal there. So we're gonna try that one and see if we can get, maybe if we can get a square six by six, then that would give us three of our 12 out of that little log. So we're gonna, we're gonna do that. For those of you wondering um, where the suspenders are, well, <laughs> they are soaking wet because I got caught in a rainstorm earlier today and so we're without. So if uh, anything hits the ground, we'll be sure to edit that out. Right, so with that tiny log we did get a six by six cant out of that and we do have a little bit of wane as you can see here 
but uh, not a huge deal. So I'm going to go ahead and start milling out some 2x6s. If we do this right at a true, um, true 8 quarter, then we should be able to get 3 out of this. So we'll fire it back up and do 2 passes. All right, so that's three. So three out of 12, nine more to go. So we're just gonna get our next smallest log and see what we can do with that. Kelly, fire us up. All right, I don't know if you can see down this poplar, but there's a pretty good dog leg right here. It's, um, it's where there was a decent sized branch. It looks like it broke off at one point and of course healed back over. So even though this thing is, yeah, it's 11 inches at the small end, we're probably gonna treat it pretty much like that last one. That was eight and a half because we're gonna, we're gonna have a lot of waste cutting out that curve. But, you know, it's a log, it'd be a shame to waste it, so we're going to go ahead and see what we can cut out of it.
All right, so that worked out perfectly. That last log, uh, I was able to, to cut an extra bit off and turn it as I was as, as cutting down my cant, as I got my six by cant, and I was able to squeak one more six by. It has this little bit of wane on it, but no big deal. These are actually eight feet long, and my measurements show that X amount of overhang that I want should be about 6.97 feet. So I'll have a foot of rafter to cut off there. Plenty to play with. So it was awesome. Three logs, gave me my 12 two by sixes, true two by sixes. So we've got them ricked up here, gonna let them dry out some and just put a little extra weight on top to hold them down. Makeup. All right, so uh, those, that was my biggest portion of the cut list. All I've got left to do is a ridge beam and then of course some smaller one by material for fascia, for purlins. I'm gonna do some lookouts because uh, we want a nice little overhang there. So um, that won't take much. In fact, we may just try to bust that out of one big log there, but we'll see. Take that camera. And then what's really cool is 
behind the scenes. It just amazes me. So that was three logs that we cut in, we probably cut that in what, an hour and a half? Yeah. So if I was gonna do three logs by myself, let's move in a little together, people. We're all out of time. If I was going to do three logs by myself, I would probably have to double that because the time it takes me to get on and off the tractor, setting up the camera shots, all those type of things. So it's nice to have Kelly on the tractor and then I'm running hook. Usually I ask her to be the hooker and she uh, never wants to. And then Camlin on the camera really helped. So that kept me from setting up, uh, from taking the time to set up shots. So nice to be able to bust that out. Speaking of shout outs, I mentioned in our last video on Friday, if you guys could identify the the nuts hanging from the tree, then I give a shout out for you. So there was a close tie. In fact, you guys comments came in about the same time, if my software is correct. So looks like first place goes to Biracois Nation, which I'm not familiar with that tribe, but man, I bet they're a hoot to hang out with. <laughs> and then second goes to Jennings Moore. Now, both of those guessed Hickory, which is the only answer I was looking for, but some of you guys got some bonus points because you guessed Shagbark Hickory, and that was correct. So uh, further on down the line, you guys answered that, but that was good. You guys have a good eye for nuts, I guess. Okay. Does anybody want to comment on Kelly's fancy new bibbed overall she's got? They're fancy. You got dirt on them, didn't you? I did at the very end. The very end. Working all that all day today and didn't get any dirt on them. And the hook. Go, the yeah. oh, you, dropped, you dropped our log hook, drops the log hook in the pile and has to fish it out. So. All right. Well, I'm sure that'll wash out. Hopefully that won't be the only dirt you get. <laughs> it's true. All right. Well, we appreciate everybody watching. Y'all take care.